Uh, we have Nesto with us. And what time is it now? Well, it is four o'clock. So we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray and we're going to go for the backpacking. And so let us pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, uh, Mark, for, uh, for, for Jimmy, and we are uh, so thankful for Nesta. We are asking, dear God, that you uh, uh, fill uh, Nesta with the Holy Spirit as he shared this beautiful part of our honor. We pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, Nesta, uh, uh, as, uh, as you are sharing your screen, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, we don't know too much about you, so... so no problem. I can share. Um, my name is Nestor Rosman. I'm in Michigan, in Andrews University right now. I work in CYE, uh, which perhaps is not very known, but uh, we organize the Campari of Oshkosh, the international Campari. Perhaps you have heard about it, and uh, which is an amazing event, and you had to come. My boss is Pastor Ron Whitehead, and he sent his greetings. Uh, he couldn't be here today, but he's the director for the Campari and I've been in charge of the international village and all the international uh, hosting agreements with local clubs providing that, that agreement. So yes, basically I was the contact for, for the 105 countries that came to the, to the Campari. Nesta, if, 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 uh, if we are able to uh, well, we're definitely planning to come for the next Oshkosh, just to let you know. And British Union is this time going to uh, come, I think, much closer together to plan and come hopefully even a bigger number than last time. So that's the plan, Esther. We hope to support you as well as you're supporting us uh, today in this Iona. The British Union did, did amazing last time. They were very organized and uh, we appreciate uh, your support for, for the event. I hope you had a, a nice time. I watched your, your videos, very good also. And, uh, and thank you for, for oh, that. No problem at all, Nesta. An absolute joy. And uh, we, we definitely, uh, we had also with us Pastor Kevin, uh, who was our SEC director, which helped us in organizing this. And we hope that this time from his experience uh, and also with the uh, new blood and new, uh, uh, new people around, we'll be able to uh, gather even quicker and bigger group this time uh, to come and help guys. Amen. Amen. Nesta, uh, uh, it is your time. Uh, please share your screen. Are you able to do that? Yes. Excellent stuff. Here it is. Guys, it's backpacking, and I just want to point this out. I really cause stress to Nesta about uh, teaching this honor because we wanted this to be uh, one more honor in, on your sash. But above everything, we wanted you to actually have the skills and also equipment necessary for backpacking. So, Nesta, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm really serious about this uh, honor because I love it. I love nature. I love to spend time. I will share uh, a photo of my family. This is Zion National Park. And, uh, and nature is amazing. And why I like too much? Because that's part of the DNA of Pathfinders. The blessing of this activity, uh, and I love this portrait also, uh, is that we can connect with God. These were the spiritual retreats of Jesus. You know, sometimes we struggle to disconnect from the week, from the school. Okay, uh, go to nature, go to a park, go to under a tree, and you will feel much easier to connect with God and pray. Direct access to revelation of God in nature. Remember that nature is the second book of God because he's the creator of everything. Create a small community when you walk in the forest with a group with strong bonds replicating the early church in a few days because everybody needs to support each other and eat and produce authenticity beyond the, the appearances and smells. That doesn't matter how you dress because <laughs> or how you smell. If, it, if you're in the forest, you're in the forest. Uh, it is what it is. Increase physical, mental, and spiritual resilience. Uh, establishes a very strong uh, common purpose. We need to get there, and we will work together, and we will fight together to get there. Uh, what? Um, plus, endorphins, weight loss, joy, fun, identity, adventure. I know that young people love adventure. Well, you will find a lot of adventure 
if you face a, a big bear in a national park, let me tell you, that will be fun. That will be let fun. Me, uh, let me ask to ask the question for everybody who joined us today uh, on uh, Facebook Live and here on Zoom. Uh, 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 guys, do, do, do you love backpacking? If you do, make sure you hit a, a like button or face or, or yes, write it down. We would love to hear anybody here likes backpacking. Nesta, uh, despite, uh, well, nobody likes backpacking. No, 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 many people like backpacking. Okay, we, we can stop the, 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 the other <laughs> We, we almost, it. we uh, almost stopped it before we started Nesta this time. So, but no, I think that we have a lot of people here who love backpacking and, and I love it too. <laughs> and in Europe, you have a lot of places to do backpacking, amazing places, and you don't have excuses. I mean, the pandemic will not last forever, so one day we will be able to, to come back to, to the mountains, to the trails, the forests. Yes. Yes. So expeditions are inspiring in Christian journey also. Enoch, uh, God, the road of Emmaus, on Peter, out of the boat and walked in the water. You know, walking is always nice. And a, way, a nice way, and if you know this picture here in the screen, uh, this is one of the most uh, earlier uh, visions of Helen White, talking about the journey of the Christian, which is really interesting. And, and this is in General Conference headquarters. This main painting is a big wall. Okay, let's go to the owner then. Are you ready? Yes, we are. There is a lot of information. I will skip some information because I don't want you to get bored with this, uh, but everything is important. And also know that you, I will share some photos of uh, my expeditions. Uh, this is in, the, in Norway, in the North uh, Circle, in the Polar Circle. Here you have minus 30 Celsius of temperature with dog, dog sleds. And uh, it is important not to leave any uh, track anything because you had to leave everything at, as it was before or better and that's what we did there try to clean everything especially because if you leave something in the snow <laughs> everybody will notice and but most important the next time that somebody comes in that place it will be a mess so we hey, Nesto, to... Nesto, thank you so much for sharing that picture. I actually um, uh, had the opportunity to do the same thing as well in Norway. Uh, uh, just to let a point out to everybody who is watching this, uh, uh, we have the worksheet and also some additional PDF information which Nesto provided us for the backpacking. So in case if you feel like, oh, this is too much information, I'm going to just give up, don't do that because we have all of that in a PowerPoint which Nesto will share with us, but also at the same time a uh, PDF file which uh, he provided us. The, the last point, if you miss something from the video, there'll be a YouTube video in the end and you'll be able to rewatch this again. Absolutely, don't worry about taking notes or, or anything, just focus on, on what we are sharing in the photos and you will have all the information on the PDF that uh, is already there. So don't worry about, this is not a class, this is a conversation that we need to have and to enjoy a little bit. So do you really need to start a fire, a campfire for example? For cooking, uh, it's not necessary. You can always bring a camp stove or a, a trail mix or energy bars and cold uh, meals and you will be fine. Or for low, low temperature, for example, something that I learned is that your body is the main source for heat. You don't need a fire to stay warm, even in the snow. And that's amazing, you know, because you think, oh, I, I will camp in the snow, I will get free. No, you don't. You need just to, you know, uh, jog a little bit, to run a little bit, to play a little bit, not too much because you don't want to get sweat, but uh, a campfire is not necessary for low temperatures. Uh, and for safety, you don't need a fire for safety. Uh, actually, this is a, a small uh, draw about where to put the fire. Usually you will fi have the fire with the kitchen, but if you have birds in the, in the forest, in the area, you should put your sleeping area away from the kitchen and away from the food and the garbage. Yes, I will talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, okay, 
So a campfire will not make any difference for verb uh, that probably that for a verb that probably had been in more campgrounds than you. You know, birds are experts in uh, in pathfinders. <laughs> <laughs> they know them very well, so they know what kind of pathfinder, pathfinder you are, if you are a clean pathfinder or if you are a messy pathfinder. So try to be the first one because otherwise they will have a conversation with you. You don't want that, okay? Uh, number one and number two. Every, the, I think this is universal. Everybody knows what is number one and number two, isn't it? When you had to go to the bathroom, amen? Amen. Yes, it is the same language here as well. Amen. So in, uh, you have to understand this image. If I show you this image, what is the meaning of this image? You have your it's toilet paper. People, shall we ask the people on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the comments? Absolutely. What does, for is everything here? Does this, uh, what does this represent, people? This is going to be funny. Uh, uh, if you see this picture, Okay, uh, some people are saying uh, a loo roll, which is toilet roll. Uh, um, anybody else? Uh, okay, okay, th th that's a tissue roll. But as an image, uh, what does it really mean? <clears throat> it, uh, well, I can tell you, Nesta, that uh, our pathfinders just went quiet on this one. So you tell us, Nesta. This is, uh, I always say, what is the most important thing that you had to bring in a backpacking trip? And usually people forget about the paper, you know? But that's the most important thing. You don't want to forget about the paper. But also you have to do something about it because otherwise the forest will look like, a, you know, something disgusting. So uh, you have two options. You can dig a hole and bury everything or you can dig a hole, bury just your, your part and bring the paper in a Ziploc bag. That's the, the trend right now. Uh, but anyway, you had to cover all your tracks. You had to leave anything on top of the floor. Everything had to be buried. And you had the hand sanitizer to clean yourself. And, uh, and yes, that's a procedure, basically. And I put down there ground, water, and wind. Why is that? Uh, let me show you. You had to do it in a distance from trail and water. Yes, you don't want to do this in the water you are drinking or you are washing your dishes. Please, this is really important and you don't want to do it by your tent either because some animals are attracted for that smell and you don't want those animals around your tent. Yes? Amen? And also a hole with should be something big enough, you know, for what you are going to do. Sorry, this is not very romantic conversation, but it is necessary and you have to pay attention to this, okay? Please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, point number two, know the essentials of proper clothing, shoes, and rain gear to use in a backpacking. This was a backpacking trip and we walked most of the time in summer in the water. So we were walking on the water, it was super shallow and it was a lot of fun with young people. So for hot, this was a, an expedition in the rainforest in South America. For hot temperatures, high temperatures, uh, you have hiking shoes, different kind, trail runner, hiking shoes, hiking boots, and there is a discussion. What's best? What's the, in the photos, you will see always the people with hiking boots. In the practice, my uh, opinion, and I might be wrong, or what works for me might not work for you, I prefer the hiking shoes. Because, uh, you know, a lighter, uh, more ventilation, and uh, even if I have less protection, you will be fine. If uh, you Nesta, are more... Yes. Nesta, the question came as you were walking through that uh, uh, river, a uh, shallow river, what uh, type of uh, uh, shoes did you have for that as it's water? exactly the same shoe that I used to walk, the, the one in the middle. Why? Because if you keep walking, the shoes will uh, dry automatically because your body is warm and you keep walking and we, it will get dry. If by the night it's not dry enough, you will have a little fire perhaps and you can uh, uh, finish drying. But don't worry about that. Remember, the nature is not, is not a fashion uh, exposition of your clothes, new clothes, new shoes. 
you used to use what you have at home and you are comfortable with. Nothing new, please, because that, that would be a, a mistake and a problem with your mother. Yes? Or <laughs> remember that. Yes, yes. Okay, now hiking socks. And this, I don't want to go very technical with this, but basically you have cotton socks, which is the most comfortable. Uh, if it's not wet, if it's wet, it will take a while to, to dry. Or you have polyester nylon, which are synthetic and it will dry really quick, but are not very comfortable. And for winter, you have wool. And uh, especially something called merino wool. This is really good because it doesn't itch. Um, and it's very good for uh, winter. The thicker, the better. So this is a good opportunity to talk with your grandma, perhaps. And uh, they are used to be experts preparing socks, white, uh, thick socks. So this is a good opportunity. Or perhaps that was in my time. Perhaps it's, you know, they will go to Amazon and buy socks for you. But anyway, the underpants, it needs to be something uh, tight so to avoid painful rush during the hike. If it's hot, if you are crossing a, a stream like these guys in, in one of these expeditions in South America, you don't want to walk wet. Uh, the, your, foot is, your feet are not a problem. The problem is uh, about your knee. So please wear something tight. Hiking pants, for example, I recommend, and this is always uh, a discussion, I recommend long pants instead of shorts uh, to avoid you know, insects, poison plants, sunburn, and scratches. So if you do that, you will be safe, and also uh, you will prevent dehydration. Uh, because uh, if you see the people that live in the deserts, for example, they are all covered. Why? Because in that way they are keeping the moisture in their skin and they prevent dehydration. Uh, cotton shirt, look at this design. I love this design. <laughs> I don't know if you have one of these. I might have one, but no, no, no. <laughs> Mesto, you just gave us a dear baby. We just have to make one. <laughs> uh, you are in trouble, uh, Pastor. So I'm sorry, but you need something of this. I mean, the public is asking for this. <laughs> so cotton uh, t-shirts are the best, are comfortable, cheap. Everybody has one of these uh, or two or three. Bring one, at least one per day, and that would be enough. Always remember um, a hat with a wide brim to protect. Your head is the most important thing that you need to protect in summer and in winter because it's the control center. So you don't want to play with that, even if you want to have a, you know, a tan or something. Leave it for the beach when you are going and back to, the, to your home, but not for a long weekend because you might have problems with that. You need to be protected. Uh, for low temperatures, these are my friends from, from Norway and the Na Danish people uh, that went with, with us in, the, in Alta, in the north of Norway. Dressing layers, we will never get tired of teaching these. Layers are the key, guys. Uh, you can dress a t-shirt and a big jacket and that's a problem because if you are hot, you will take out the jacket and you will be super cold. cold. And if you put it on, it will be super. So you need something in between. And this is the key, the outer layer, the middle layer, and the base layer. The base layer will be uh, like this, for example, underwear layer. Uh, this is a winter camp. Imagine uh, sleeping in the snow or in a super cold winter. Uh, you have your socks, you have your uh, ski mask or balaclava, I don't know how do you call it, where you can cover all your head except your eyes, your gloves and a long uh, sleeve uh, shirt and, and pants. Merino wool is the best, it is a little bit expensive, wool is okay and fleece is the cheaper and works fantastic also. So if you don't have anything of this, Wool, uh, sorry, cotton will make it, uh, but you have to be careful because if it's a really cold weather, it will not be enough. 
the second layer, it will be more polyester fleece, down insulating jacket or synthetic insulating jacket. Fleece is the most common and cheaper that you will find. The jacket, for example, is fleece. And uh, also uh, for work, you, you need a hiking pants, which is anything that is comfortable for you. That's uh, the, the main, the main uh, concept. Finally, the third layer is basically the protection layer, the shell. And there you will uh, hear brands like Gore-Tex, even, et cetera, et cetera. Every brand has a different name for, for the thing. But the, the key point is that it needs to protect you from the wind and from the water and, uh, and let you sweat if possible. So yes, you will have some warm boots over here, some more not so warm but comfortable boots, some python here to cover your gloves. So you will use layers in your hands also and you will be fine. When it's raining, what do you do when it's raining? Uh, stay at home. No, that's not the point. We are pathfinders. We go out, we enjoy the snow, rain, whatever. No tornadoes, but everything else we are happy with. And uh, um, the magic, magic poncho, it's okay. With a poncho, you will be fine. I, we, I can talk about expensive gear, but a poncho, a uh, $1 poncho will make the job. So you will be fine. Any questions here? I don't know if we have a space for questions. Yes, we do have a space for questions. Uh, 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 the reality is that people, are, uh, when people start writing in chats and in comments, they usually means they're focusing on presentation. So if there are any questions, but make sure that you post them, guys, uh, in the comments. Uh, somebody is asking about, uh, somebody is asking when it comes to expeditions, uh, what would be uh, the uh, good place to start with expeditions? Uh, the best place for an expedition to start, if you are new in this, is your backyard, basically. The, the, the little green space behind your home, if you have one, or the backyard of the church, or yes, you have to try everything in a safely uh, environment, in a place that you know very well, before going, you know, to the mountains or to the, the end of the world, please try always in a safe environment with your leaders and check your, your gear. Is your sleeping bag good enough or not? Uh, let me tell you uh, a sad story that I hear every time uh, of other adult people that they said, oh, I used to go to Pathfinders, but they, they took me to a camp out and that night I suffered because it was so cold and I was so in pain that I never came back to Pathfinders. That's a traditional story that you can hear because uh, if you don't know the technique, this is not about money, this is about technique. If you don't know the layers technique, you will have cold uh, yeah. in the night. Uh, thank you, Nesta. Yes, let's keep going. Uh, point number three, know the principles in selecting a good quality backpack in an emergency, what might be used in place of a backpack. You have three styles of backpack mainly, external frame, which are uh, getting less and less used right now, but it is more a traditional uh, backpack. The more standard backpack with the internal frame and what is getting fashion now, the without frame, which is basically a bag a regular bag, uh, but it is amazing. The third ones are more expensive than everything else, but it, because it is fashion. I would suggest the second one because it is super comfortable. When you move, it will move with you and you will have enough space. That's my uh, opinion. Again, uh, I will not go through every line because there is a lot of information and you will have access to the, all these Beyond the system and with internal or external frame, the bodies of the backpacks are more or less similar. You will get surprised with that. However, the quality of the shoulder and hip uh, straps will determine a big part of the comfort and performance of the backpack. So if the shoulders are okay and the hip is okay, you will be fine. 
And the best backpack that you can get for your first expedition is the backpack that you can get bor uh, borrow from someone. <laughs> I did my first six, seven expedition borrowing a backpack from someone else uh, because it is an investment and it, it will take some money to do it. So better to, to borrow some backpack first and then when you have the, the chance, buy one. Loading uh, capacity of the backpack. So how big should, should my backpack be? Uh, this in math says something like a more is not equal to, to better or to more. So uh, if you have a backpacking, a backpack of between 50 and 70 liters, you will be fine. If you're a child, you will have something smaller than that, way smaller than that. And uh, it doesn't mean that you have to fill it absolutely with every inch and everything because uh, more is not better. So bigger is not be better talking about backpacks. You will have a, a problem if you do that. An improvised backpack. What if you take your jacket, grab your the hood, make a, a knot there, tie it, then take the corner of the, of the jacket and tie it to the sleeve like that. Yes. And then you fill it with whatever you, you want. See that this is the hood and these are the sleeves that are tied like this. And ta -da, you have your backpack ready to go. This is an emergency backpack. Yes. This is not for a long time, but in the case that your backpack is broken or something in the middle of the trail, you can improvise and make something like this. Uh, point number four, know the essential items to be taken on a backpack trip. Essentials. Why I put this photo here crossing a, a creek? Uh, by the way, I'm the guy on the, on the yellow thing, the yellow vest because you don't know what you have to do. For example, if somebody gets hurt and you have to help someone else and somebody had to take your backpack, you don't want other people to take a super heavy backpack. So you need to pack as lighter as possible uh, and you will learn that with experience, but you don't want to put everything that you can in your backpack. Please, you have to be efficient with that. And uh, do you really need it? Think if you have doubts about something. Are you really going to use it? Uh, what would be the worst scenario if you don't take it with you? That's a very good question. I know the girls are liking these high heels uh, sandals, but <laughs> do you really need it? Perhaps you don't, you know, and the boys will love the multi-tools with thousand tools, but uh, it's not necessary. You will be fine with very little. And, uh, and your spirit of pathfinder and adventure. That's very important. Okay, now we have a task for the people. Uh, I love this uh, image because it's, it is really very right, but there are some things that are missing. And I would like to ask the, the people, the participants to tell me what is missing here. Take a look, this is, instead of a list, the list will be in the PDF, but for the presentation, this is my list. So let's have a look. Uh, uh, what, okay, okay, somebody just said a Bible and food. Very good, Bible and food, yes. What else? And somebody just added another comment. Oh, uh, well, no, no, that's a wrong comment because I just saw it. Somebody said compass, but compass is there. Mm -hmm. Compass is in the picture. Uh, some clothes, they're saying, some clothes. Exactly, yes, sir. Very well, what else? What else is missing? <clears throat> Let's have a look on the Facebook as well. Uh, on the Facebook, yeah, uh, they're all saying similar things. Um, it's tricky because this image is really well done. But there is, a, I, I have a list. Uh, somebody says a hammer. And, and also bags uh, for the, okay, bags for toilets. Uh, um, okay, <laughs> somebody said in this picture, 
uh, love is missing. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Uh, if somebody says it's definitely missing inhaler, if they need inhaler, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's true. First aid box. You have the first aid, and you have here some A massive first aid box there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody is again being very funny. Somebody says, you know, they need their friend to carry this thing for them. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. So I think that's what you will need to tell us. Okay. This is a list of things that are missing. First, you don't have a sleeping pad to put under your, your sleeping bag. So you don't want to sleep on the rocks. Food and clothes that some of you already said. Toiletries. You need to wash your... your teeth, you know, to brush your teeth and uh, per perhaps you will need uh, that kind of soap that you can use in, a, in the wilderness uh, if you want to take a, a, a bath, which is something that I strongly recommend. And you say, no, but we are backpacking. You don't need to take a shower. I love to go to the almost frozen lakes when I'm super tired and jump in and uh, you know, you will shower a little bit, but that will be amazing. Of course, take care of your heart. If you have any disease, you have to ask your, your doctor first, but that will restore your, your muscles. And you will feel awesome. You will sleep amazing. And it's what sports uh, guys, the professionals do after every match, you know, go to the super cold water. Cell phone, Bible, GPS, and camera. Everything in the same item. That's why you can bring your big camera, you can bring your cell phone, you can bring your Bible, you can bring your cell phone, you can bring a GPS, or you can bring your cell phone. So those four things are together. And a solar charger, if you are going for more than one day. Uh, sunglasses, if it's summer, mosquito repellent, if it's summer, bear spray, if you are in a bear zone, and garbage bags and rope. This is really important to keep clean everything you are doing, okay? Everything else is right, but let me show you a little bit more, an extra. Uh, some of these things are optional, for example, the hiking poles, these are optional. Some people like to use it, I don't like to use them because I'm, I'm used to not to use them and I don't want to spend energy in my arms and I just want to walk safe, but that's me. Then uh, the map and the compass can be replaced for a GPS. Uh, let me show you that again. The lighter can be replaced for a uh, steel match. And the bars, energy bars can be replaced for a um, trail mix that you can do at home, okay? And the plastic commercial bottle can be replaced for a regular water bottle and it will be fine. Finally, uh, the drops or the peels to purify water can be replaced for a filter. Let's go, number five. What kind of sleeping bag and pad are best for your camping area? No, at least three kinds of each that are available. Okay, so these are the basic three kinds of, uh, of sleeping bag, the shapes. You have the mummy, the rectangle, and the barrel, which is like a combination of the other two. Uh, if you are going to a, a winter camp, you should use perhaps the mummy because that would protect you better and it's smaller. And uh, it says here that it's not as comfortable, but you get used to that and it's not a problem. You prefer to be a little tight than uh, to be cold. That's for sure. The rectangle are the cheapest one, are the, the cheaper one. And, um, but the problem is that it's super open, but you can use it as a, as a blanket also. And it's super spacey, so you, you will be comfortable there for more for a, a summer camp. And the barrel is a three season, it is in between. You will have more room than in the mummy and more uh, warm than in the rectangle. Uh, but yes, this is not for, for winter. 
Then you have, well, this is kind of technique, the slipping by field materials. Uh, you will hear about synthetic and downs. Synthetic is a more, uh, is cheaper and is what most of the people have. Down is more for winter and is more technically technical, but you don't want to get wet with down. And these numbers, when you see a sleeping bag says 650, 700, that, that's basically the amount of uh, material or field that they have by inch, yes? And this is another thing interesting. When you have a sleeping bag, the sleeping bag will say a lot of numbers. What are the, those numbers mean? You have, for example, this one says, uh, the first one, 20 Fahrenheit, uh, seven, minus seven Celsius. Okay, so that means that I will be happy at min minus seven Celsius, perhaps no. So it says comfort, the comfort says zero Celsius. So that means that if it's above zero, you will be fine. If it's under zero, you will feel it. Limit means that you will have a very night, a very bad night. And extreme means that you are in trouble. Yes, the limit you will might survive the night if you have a first layer really thick. And uh, but uh, the extreme, forget about it. Go home and and think again the material. Something that will help to improve your sleeping bag. Uh, then you don't need to buy a new one. Is um is a sleeping bag liner. That you can buy this, or you can basically uh, make yourself one. Make yourself one. What is a, a liner? It's basically another sleeping bag made with a fleece blanket. And I will show you for a second mine, if you can see in my little screen. This is mine. I made it with a regular fleece blanket. And I, and I asked my mom, no, I'm kidding. My wife, she prepared it like, a, uh, like an envelope, you know? So I put this inside my sleeping bag and I jump in and this is the insulation um, layer. This keeps me warm. And if, even if my sleeping bag is not the best sleeping bag in the world, this will increase the temperature in your sleeping bag. This is a really nice trick. Uh, for uh, mothers that want, don't want to spend more money in a, in a expensive sleeping bag, use this and you will feel awesome and your boys will sleep much better. Finally, the sleeping bag, which is another thing that uh, a mattress, and you have uh, basically three kind of these kind of mattresses. One is closed cell phone, which is uh, to the right, the gray one. Those are kind of bulky, super cheap, super light, but bulky. So if you are walking, that might be a problem. And these are not the most comfortable, but they will they will keep you uh, warm because the insulation, the yeah, the isolation is is really good. Then you have the self-inflating pad. These are more heavy, uh, but are okay also, and you can regulate the the pressure inside and you will sleep fine. And the standard now are the air pad. Uh, and you have different kind of things in a case of an emergency or if you don't want to spend money on this, you can use the ones that you use for the swimming pool. And th those are perfect also. Uh, that's an iPad also. Very comfortable, lightweight and very compact. That's the key of, of this. The idea is always to stay away from the ground because the ground will, will transmit to you a lot of cold. Point number six, know how to pack a backpack properly. Uh, according to the use and weight, the frequently used items should be on top. Like for example, if you have an emergency and you need to, your first aid, if you want to drink water, if you want to, if you want to eat some snacks, this is the place for those. Then, uh, according to the the weight, the heavier things should be next to your back, and the lighter items away from your back, and the heavier uh, items 
uh, as I said, next to your bag, and they infrequently use items like your sleeping bag because that will be the last thing that you will use should be on the bottom. This is according to weight and terrain. If you are in a moderate terrain, if you are in a flat place, the heavy can go up. If you are in a mountain, the heavy should be a little bit down, closer to your back all the time. And don't, forget, don't worry about the images and everything. You will have everything at home. Uh, this is a center of gravity. I don't want to talk about that. How to properly adjust a backpack. This is very technically, but I will uh, rush a little bit through. Uh, first, you have to lose all the traps in your backpack. That's the first step. Then you put it on. And this is important to know. Your hip strap should be first and the one that will hold the most of the weight in your backpack, not your shoulders. People understand that uh, wrong most of the time. They believe, oh, all the weight is in the shoulders. Actually, the shoulders are not for that. In the hip, you should uh, hold most of the, of the weight. So more kilograms on the hip than on the shoulders. And then your backpack should be close to your body, not away from your body. If you put it away, it will make like a, I don't know, I don't know. how do you say it in English? Lever. But a lever, but it will pull you and it will, that will hurt. So keep it close and you will be fine. And then as different kind of regulations that you can do, adjustments that you can do while you are walking if the terrain is changing. What type of food? Let's go with food are best for backpacking. Visit a grocery store and list the food found there that are suitable for backpacking. With your instructor, do the following. And these were pizza that we made in, a, yeah, in the jungle. I will not tell you how. Prepare a menu for a weekend backpack trip using food contained uh, from a grocery store. You know, uh, I don't do that. I don't do a menu for everybody. I used to do that in, in back in my country, but not in the US, uh, because everybody has a different uh, allergy or something, and that's something that you need to consider. So everybody had to understand what is best for the group. Sometimes if everybody are, you know, pathfinders, it will be fine. If are older people, they can decide and learn the techniques of measuring backpacking, uh, packaging and labeling uh, backpack food for your trip. If you have any allergy, you should prepare your own food, you know, and have your own menu. But uh, as a principle, I will tell you, number one, the backpacking trip is not a place for experiments. If you never tried that food before, don't try it in a backpacking trip. Try it at home first and feel how your body is reacting to that food because you don't want to have that kind of problem in a backpacking trip. Number two, keep it simple. More is not always better. Uh, perhaps your menu is kind of simple and that will be fine uh, because you are not going to a restaurant. Your main goal is to connect with God in nature, to enjoy, discover, have adventures. And meals are a good part of that also, but it's not the main part. Uh, number three, keep it light. Okay, you don't need to bring a can of salchiches, veggie salchiches or whatever, any can, for example, because that's metal, that's water that you are not going to eat. So keep it uh, with the, this kind of, of food, the dehydrated food, because these are lighter, nutritious and compact. Doesn't mean that you have to buy this. You can make it at home. And uh, the mothers are experts on this. Uh, any spaghetti, any uh, mac and cheese or whatever can be prepared. You just need to add hot water and you will be fine. Boiling water at the campground and you will be fine. Um, for breakfast, for example, I like oatmeal. There are little envelopes or you can prepare a little bag, put some trail mix on it. And again, boiling water, you will be fine for breakfast and, and, you, and your body will appreciate. Any questions so far? Or should I continue with? Every, uh, Nesta, everybody is writing. So uh, there are a few 
there are just a few uh, questions uh, still going back to the photo uh, <coughs> when your feet get wet you mentioned that it they will be able to just dry them at the temperature um, uh, um, uh, when the temperature of your feet warms up all right uh, so there uh, there was a question about the fire um, uh, you know, do you do do you start a fire on every single expedition stop when you decide to camp, or there are moments that you just camp out without fire? <clears throat> it depends. I mean, the fire is a trap. I always say so. The fire is a trap for you. Uh, let me tell you why. Especially in winter camps, because in winter camps you get closer to the campfire and closer and closer, and your body start to understand that you are in. Canarian Island, you know, in the in the Caribbean, and your st uh, body start to sweat. And when you walk away to go to to the tent, your body is confusing. It's confused and uh, it kept sweating, and you get cold, and you will have problems with that. You will have a really bad right. night. Uh, thank you, Nesta, for that. Somebody's asking, can you find your own food where you're hiking, and would you suggest it? Oh yeah, sure. But that's a different honor. That's survival honor that I can teach also, but this, that's not part of this honor. No problem at all. So you would say, okay, I'm not honored for that. All right, so let's go with these two questions and let's go next slide. We have about maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, let's go. Now the prevention symptom for the first aid four. Uh, by the way, these pictures are from expeditions that I have made. And the words of this, Little creatures are the ones on the left, bottom left. Those, the caterpillars, those are super painful, super uh, dangerous uh, in the rainforest. So you have to take care of them. Especially more branches, more color, the, the worst. Sunburn, uh, blisters, uh, frost. I will not go through everything. Number one, because I'm not a doctor. Number two, because there are other owners that are covering this and you should take like first aid, for example. Uh, but I will give you some general principles uh, for this uh, to prevent hypothermia, frostbite, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. You should consider uh, dehydration like the one of the main things that you have to take care of. Usually people, and especially pathfinders, they don't like to drink water. And I'm talking about water, and I will repeat water. I'm not saying soda or any juice or sugar thing. I'm talking about water. And uh, if you don't drink water, you will have problems in summer. Of course, everybody knows that. But if you don't drink water, you will have problems in the snow and in winter also as well. Uh, because your body requires a lot of water, you know, to keep your body warm. If you don't drink water, you will have problems. So uh, please uh, keep that in mind. And don't start drinking water at the campground or at the expedition. You need to start drinking water every day. Uh, even if you don't want to or you don't feel like drinking water, you have to do it every day. Uh, especially the week before of the of the backpacking trip. How much is enough? You have to ch uh, check with your urination. Uh, if it's your urine is uh, clear, you are fine. If it's not clear, you need to drink more. That's basically the the principle. I'm sorry. That's basically the principle to consider for this. And another thing uh, that I want to talk is uh, the blisters, for example. That's really common. What do you do with blisters? Basically, you can change your socks every hour, for example, or every two hours for dry socks. That will keep um, your feet clean and uh, dry, and that will prevent blisters. Uh, blisters are coming from the friction and the sweating. When you are wet, you will have problems. Uh, but again, if you cross a creek and your feet are soaked in water, you keep walking, you will be fine. Not that kind of wet, because that usually is cold and you will be fine. The blisters are coming from the uh, heat of the, of the sweat that you might experience. Number nine, have a first aid kit in your, back, in your pack and know how to use it. A lot of information is in the PDF, so I will not tell you a lot of things, 
Chas Compact Lightweight First Aid Kits are available and many retailers and outdoor outfitters. But don't just go out and buy one and toss it in your backpack uh, without another thought. It is important for you to open it up and examine every item. You should be aware of what you have and what you don't have. And consider also the medical forms of the backpacking, uh, the participants in order to include in the first aid kit a solution for potential issues. In other words, if you have uh, people with allergies, for example, or with any disease that will represent a problem for the hiking, you should be aware of that ahead of time, make sure that they are bringing their medicine or and that you have a, a backup plan for any situation, okay? That's very important. And we have a list, I will not go through the list. You have the list in the PDF file. Point number 10, come on, we can make it. Five more minutes. According to your weight, what is the maximum number of pounds that you should be allowed to carry or the weight that you should be allowed to carry? Let me tell you, 20% uh, is like a too much. Um, I would suggest when you have more experience, you will bring less and less and less. But if you are a leader, you will bring that little, but you will have the same amount for others, you know, to share in case of emergency, extra equipment like ropes, for example. Uh, so yes, 20% of your body. So if you are, I don't know, uh, 70 kilos, seven kilos should be the, the weight of your backpack top and from there lower. So yes, no three ways to find the direction without compass demonstrate at least two nor Northern Hemisphere instructions. I will run through this, but you have uh, different options. You have the, if you fa find Polaris, for example, and you will have the Big Dipper, you, you have to be aware of this. There are applications for your phone while, well, that you can use for this uh, to be familiar, but you should do the STARS uh, honor to fully understand where the, the, the constellations map. And in that way, you will find uh, the, the south. Also, you can use a watch. Uh, you just need to point the hour to uh, the sun. And in the middle in the intersection between the hour that is pointed to the sun and the 12 o'clock, you will have the south. And this is uh, just, we can talk about in the orientation honor about this. This is uh, basically another honor this uh, requirement alone. And this is the same principle with a stick. You put a rock, then you wait 15 minutes, put another rock, and then uh, from the stick that you put in the middle of the angle, you will get the, the north in this case. Why the north? Because the sun is running around the globe in the Ecuador, so that means that uh, the sun, the shade will always point to the somewhere in the north. Show the proper way to put uh, on and take off your backpack along with the partner. And this is the last point. So how to put it on? You can lift it with your feet, put it on your knee and, and grab the, the straps and put in uh, one shoulder and rapidly uh, turn and put the second shoulder. You can do the same directly from the ground, like in the second option. But the most common way is if somebody can help you. I like to do it with a table, then I get comfortable first, and then I start walking. Finally, participate in a weekend backpack trip for at least five miles, eight kilometers to a site not accessible by a vehicle and cook your own meals. That's something for your agenda after the pandemic. And finally, and remember, it is not about us that we do this, it is about them. And these are some photos of my expeditions with uh, young people through the years. Wow, that's beautiful. Nesta, uh, it's, uh, do, you, do you still organize the expeditions as a, uh, as a C, C, uh, Center for Youth Evangelism? 
uh, expedition is something here that I do with some uh, for a North American division. We call it Master Guide Outdoors. Yes. T-shirts here, and the idea is to for Master Guide to have this training to organize expeditions and invite friends that are not Adventists. Yes. So th there are a lot of young people that love outdoors, but they are not very sure about the church. So they will go to a backpacking trip with you first. Uh, like myself, for example, I became Adventist with 20 years old, but I uh, first, before going to the church, I went to camp out, several camp outs and make a lot of friends. And from there, go to the church was, just go with my friends to the church. And that was really nice for me. <clears throat> Nesto, thank you so much for sharing this beautiful presentation with us.